Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. What better way to talk about new vinyl than at a record store? I'm at the Vinyl Corner in Kortrijk, one of my favorite shops in Belgium. Bruno has a great selection, he knows his stuff, he knows what he's talking about, and uh, I really like coming here. Today, on the last Saturday of the month, I'm picking up this. This is Opa, a band from Uruguay who recorded this session in the 1970s. It was released on CD for the first time in the mid-90s. And now the brilliant label for Out Records is releasing it on vinyl. Great jazz funk from the 70s from Uruguay. Highly recommended. I haven't listened to the complete album, but what I heard sounds great. So recommended reissue. Next up is one of the most anticipated jazz releases of the moment. It's a live session from Alice Coltrane recorded at Carnegie Hall in 1971, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, 1971. So around the time of her album Journey to Sachidananda. I had to practice for this to say this. Uh, this is a great session with um, Pharaoh Sanders, um, Archie Shepp, uh, Jimmy Garrison, a lot of great musicians and I can't wait to hear it. I haven't previewed this, but I'm sure it's gonna be great one of the most anticipated jazz releases of the moment on Impulse Records. This is one I missed last year. It's from Great Fo Greg Fote and Gigi Masson, so an ambient musician and a jazz keyboardist working together. I've listened to this, it sounds great. I'm very happy that Strut did a repress for this one. So the album is called Dolphin and it's out on Strut Records. If you missed it last year, like me, now's your chance to Grab it. This is a second hand release, Milt Jackson. A great session with Cedar Walton, Ron Carter, Jimmy Heath, and Mickey Roker as musicians. It's a double final. It's a Japanese press, I believe. Japans? Yes. Yes, Japanese press. So I'm very happy with this. I love Milt Jackson. He's a vibraphone player. And the title track of this album was sampled by a Tribe Called Quest for a war tour and a couple of other bands, including Tech 9 the side project, project from For a Hero. So very happy to have this uh, with a great cover on CTI. Yeah, so that was fun recording that at the vinyl corner. I was a bit nervous and a bit shy, but I think I did well. Uh, before I go to the rest of the records that I purchased in March, I would like to give a little impression of the two record shops that I visited that same morning in Antwerp. Uh, one, Tune Up, is a shop I always visit when I go to Antwerp, mostly secondhand, but a lot of new vinyl as well. And Sugar Pie Records, which is a relatively new shop. Well, it is to me. I, I'd never been there, but I really wanted to go because uh, I know they had some good stuff. So before I go to the records, here's a little impression of the shops. All right, so now I imagine you want to know which records I've picked up. Um, I could have spent a lot of money in both the shops. The selections there are excellent. Uh, I picked up just a couple, starting with this one. This is Courtney Pine's second album from 1988. It's called Destiny Song and the Image of Pursuance. All I can say about this one, if you find it, buy it. A brilliant jazz album from a UK legend. You won't be disappointed and they don't go for a lot of money. So pick this up, Courtney Pine. Another one I bought uh, also at Tune Up Records is this one, Mobo 1 and Mobo 2 from Kazumi Watanabe. Japanese guitar player, fusion, jazz rock, uh, but what triggered me to check this out was the list of guest musicians on this one. As you can see, it has Sly and Robbie, Marcus Miller, Michael Brecker on saxophone, so a great lineup of musicians. Uh, with the presence of Sly and Robbie, obviously the reggae and dub influences are there, 
but uh, this is very good albums what I heard so far. I haven't listened to both of them yet completely. The jazz rock elements are not really my thing, you know, the heavy, quite heavy guitar work there, but that's what you get with a guitar player, I guess. So yeah, I'm curious to dig in deeper to this, uh, to these two albums. Then I went to Sugar Pie Records, also a great selection there, more new vinyl. And I picked up some uh, recent ones there. Um, this is Takuya Kuroda, the Japanese trumpet player, whose album uh, Rising Sun was uh, reissued recently, as you may remember. This is an album from 2022, Midnight Crisp. Again, very funky jazz, uh, highly recommended. This, uh, this guy is uh, on fire right now, releases some great stuff. So, um, great album from 2022. And this is from last year, 2023. It's the Tara Clerken Trio uh, on the Turning Ground. Uh, not sure if this is an album or an EP. Uh, what I do know is that uh, it's a great combination of jazz and more folky elements. Uh, the trio is from Bristol, so there's that drip hop sound. Uh, if you can still say that in 2024, I will keep an eye out for future releases by these guys because it could be very interesting. Nice release from the Tara Clerken trio. Okay, before I talk about the new releases and reissues that I found interesting in the month of March, I would like to talk about three more secondhand albums that I picked up. And by coincidence, they are all from 1978. Um, I picked them up in different stores on a different day, but they're all from the same year. So the first one is Ralph McDonald's The Path. I bought this for the A side because it's the title track, which uh, is a three part suite that goes on for 17 minutes. It starts out with a heavy African percussion and African chants by the likes of Miriam Akiba and Hugh uh, Masekala on vocals. And uh, it continues into a kind of hybrid of jazz funk and disco. And Bob James uh, joins in for a synthesizer solo. And there's uh, Michael Brecker on uh, saxophone. So that first track is really incredible. 17 minutes of pure bliss. Um, very, very good. The B-side is to yeah, too soft for me. Uh, track with Grover Washington Jr. and Toots Tielemans. So you know what you're in for, I guess, <laughs> with all respect. But uh, not really my cup of tea. A side is what it's all about. And this beautiful gatefold cover. So Ralph McDonald, The Path, first one from 1978. I actually talked about this one in my previous video, the German vinyl challenge that I did. Uh, by the way, I got some great reactions and a lot of response for that one. So thank you very much to my viewers. Um, Roy Ayers, let's do it. Um, like I said in that video, the A side hasn't aged very well. It's all about the B side, which has killer tracks like um, Sweet Tears and uh, Freaky Deaky, which is Roy Ayers take on P-Funk in a way. Very, very good, uh, the B-side. And of course, the inner sleeve has this iconic pick of Roy. Yeah, magnificent musician. I'm a big fan, so a nice addition to the collection there. And this was on my wish list. I have a good visual memory. Uh, I knew the sleeve when I saw it at a record fair uh, this uh, last month, and uh, but I didn't re really remember what it was. Um, but I picked it up anyway because it was on my wish list for a reason. And this is very, very good. A uh, crossover between soul and funk and disco. It, it is, after all, 1978. But I really like the arrangements on this. Of course, the vocals by uh, Frankie Beverly are phenomenal. And uh, yeah, this is a great, great album. It's the second album from Maze. And uh, I hope to find their debut album as well um, someday and add it to the collection because this is a really, really good album. I really like this a lot. I picked up this one from 2023. This is a fantastic album from Ricardo Diaz Gomez, Muito Sol, it's called. 
I really like this. This musician worked with Caetano Veloso at the early 2000s. And uh, he's a bass player, uh, but also plays synthesizer. Those classic Brazilian sounds mixed with post-rock and soundscapes. Very, very good album. Uh, I don't know where I saw this. I think it was on the Instagram account of the Rush Hour store in Amsterdam. But i um, very happy I picked this up. Uh, a great, great album from 2023. So check this out. Okay, so then moving on to the new releases of March 2024, finally. <laughs> um, I would like to start with Amaro Freitas, who is a Brazilian pianist. This is a third album of his that I have on vinyl. Um, it's called, that's the title. I'm not gonna even try to pronounce that. Um, <laughs> uh, Brazilian pianist, uh, it's mostly solo piano on this one, but also some uh, other traditional instruments that he plays and uh, field recordings from the Brazilian rainforest. And uh, this is a great, great listen. Um, on two or three tracks, there are guest musicians, but not the least, it's Shabaka Hutchings, Jeff Parker, and Brandy Younger, to name just a few. So great guest musicians on uh, two or three tracks there. Uh, but this is a fantastic listen and definitely an album for my top 10 list of 2024. I can assure you that already. Great album and highly recommended release from Amaro Freitas. Going to Israel, this is Shai Hazan. That's, I think, how you pronounce it. The album is called Wusul, which means arrival in Arabic. I looked that up. <laughs> um, Jazzy undertones, very funky grooves mixed with some traditional Moroccan music, the guana sound, you may have heard of that. And uh, yeah, very groovy stuff. Uh, I really like this one. If you like funky grooves with a, a touch of uh, Northern African sounds on there, great listen. The best jazz release of the month is probably this album. It's Cassie Kinoshi's Seed Ensemble with uh, Gratitude, another great release on International Anthem and label you will know by now if you follow my videos. Um, fantastic album. Uh, Casey Kinoshi is a saxophone player and a composer from uh, the UK. This album comes in a cool color variant as well. Uh, let me read you what uh, the OB strip says. Evolved, emotionally attuned, creatively ambitious and compositionally expansive philharmonic expression of post-millennial UK jazz. Nothing more to add, brilliant album. Moving on to the new album by Mo Colors. This is the one. This is absolutely fantastic. I really love this. If you know about Mo Colors, he is a musician from England who moved to the uh, Japanese countryside a couple of years ago, apparently, and uh, it's a mix of very cool, soulful vocals mixed with elements of jazz and uh, very percussive hip hop beats. Um, I really, I loved his previous work, but I think this, might, this may be his best one. It's two digital EPs that were now combined to one album on vinyl. So this is a great, great album. Uh, I really like this one. And it's released on We Release Jazz, which is a sub-label of that great label with a great name. We release whatever the fuck we want. So <laughs> I really like this, Mo Colors. Uh, Moving to the more electronic side of things, uh, Fortet also released a new album in March. The album is called Three, but it's definitely not his third album. Uh, we lost count, I think. Um, he doesn't add anything new to his sound here. Uh, it's kind of um, a combination of all the things we love about Fortet. So there's some hip hop elements, some folky stuff in there, folky electronica, some dance floor cuts. So a very nice album. Nothing new actually, but uh, I love this album, uh, a great listen. 
more on the playful side of electronica is an album from Bolis Popul, his solo album. That's him right there. Boris Popul is from Belgium and uh, he released a couple of years ago that great album with uh, Charlotte Adigerie. And uh, yeah, this is very playful uh, electronica, some dance floor cuts, uh, some weird electro, some more down tempo, uh, more introspective uh, tracks on here. Uh, a great listen. Yeah, very, very fun listen actually on uh, Soul Wax. Uh, DB label, so Bolis Popul from Belgium. But I think the best Electronica album from March 2024 is probably this one. It's the new album by Jaylin. Yeah, don't look at the cover, it's all bent. I act for a replacement. And uh, there's just a big seam spit there on top, but uh, that will be fixed, no problem. Jaylin is an uh, African-American artist. This isn't her first album. Uh, she's released a couple all on Planet Mew, the British label. Combination of footwork, the Chicago um, variant of uh, electronic dance music and uh, jungle sounds in here. Uh, great electronica and the guest musicians are quite impressive. There's a track with Bjork, one with the Kronos Quartet. And uh, the final track is with legend Philip Glass. So this is a great album. I highly recommend it, that you check this out. If you are on an adventurous path in uh, electronic music, um, A Coma, a great album from Jaylin on Planet Mew Records. So that was the new music. There were also three uh, brilliant reissues that I would like to um, end this video with. The first one was uh, Vinyl Me Please's Classics Album of the Month. It was Nina Simone's Silk and Soul, a very funky album from uh, the High Priestess of Soul from 1967. Uh, this is Vinyl Me Please, so the pressing is great. Uh, great jacket, uh, great pressing. Um, yeah, fantastic album. I didn't know this album before, and I'm really glad I discovered this very funky, funky side of Nina Simone. Something completely different is Soft Selection 1984. This was released on Glossy Mistakes. There you have it. And uh, it's a compilation that was originally released in 1984 that Glossy Mistakes uh, pressed on vinyl. It was a tape originally. It features some very weird uh, Japanese underground music, um, electronic music, uh, synth pop, uh, minimal wave, and uh, <laughs> yeah, some very weird stuff on here, but I really like it. It's very, it gives a cool insight on what was happening in the J Japanese underground of that time. And uh, yeah, highly recommended. Um, Soft Selection 1984, great compilation for the first time on vinyl uh, via Glossy Mistakes. And finally, I would like to end this video with um, one of my favorite reissues of the year already. I know I say that a lot, but uh, there's just so, so many good music out there. Uh, this is the album, Quiet Logic, uh, still in shrink wrap but I hope you can see this. This was released on re-release whatever the fuck we want. Where are you? There, that's the catalog number. Um, a brilliant album. Um, it's a collaboration between Mixmaster Morris, uh, who you may also know as the Irresistible Force, made some incredible ambient music in the 1990s, and Jonah Sharp, who was the man behind the uh, Space Time Continuum, so two big names from 1990s ambient scene. And they recorded this album together in the studio, The Quiet Lodge, uh, which is the studio of the now only uh, remaining member of the Yellow Magic Orchestra, or the only uh, living member of uh, Yellow Magic Orchestra, I, I should say, sadly enough, Haruomi Hosono. So these three guys made this incredible album, if you like, that early 90s electronica 
from Warp's Artificial Intelligence series with names like Altecra and, um, and the Black Dog. This is really, really, really good. Uh, I highly recommend this. Um, so first time on vinyl was recorded in 1997 and only released on CD in Japan in 1998. So a great album from these three legends, I could say, in, uh, in electronic music. Um, Mixmaster Morris, Jonas Sharp and Haru Womi Hosono. So highly recommended. I've said it already four times, I think, but uh, I mean it. So that was it, my video for uh, the new stuff that was added to the collection in uh, March 2024. And I hope to see you soon.